Uh, Chris Cardenas. Dennis Russell. Uh, my name is Jeff Collier. Monique Hernandez Fuentes. Hi, I'm Kevin Kroger. Ruben Zarate. Trey. What do you do here at Seymour Duncan? I am technical support and customer service. I've been doing this for about 11 months now, almost a year. I'm the customer service and technical support manager. I have, in December, I will have worked here four years, December 18th. Uh, I do customer service and technical support. I'm the chief product and innovation officer. What does that mean? <laughs> that means that I enable a team of really bright people and brainstorm with them and decide what we should be doing next, how we should be doing it, what makes us most efficient, and getting awesome product for musicians, by musicians, out to musicians. I'm the associate marketing director, so I help uh, build marketing campaigns and help make our website a better user experience for our users. I'm um, social media coordinator. The digital operations specialist. I help out with the website, updates on our platforms, various systems. Do you play guitar? <laughs> yes, I play guitar. Set the record straight, best burrito in San Francisco. Uh, let's see. I would say the best burrito in the mission would be at my local hang, which is El Matate. It's on 22nd and Bryant Street, I believe. But yeah, they, they make really great food and the people that work there are awesome. I guess the great debate is like Detroit style pizza versus like Chicago versus New York. Like The great pizza debate for me is yes. Um, they're all good. There's there's no one that is better or awesome, but I've had Connecticut style, which is not the same as New, um, New York style, is not the same as Detroit style, is not the same as Chicago, but yeah, the answer is yes to pizza. Oh man, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's quite expensive. I took my wife out to this place called The Chef and I for uh, our anniversary. It's a really nice place, but it was one of those um, recommended experiences where the chefs just say, hey, this is, you know, what are you into? Okay, we're going to cook you a dish. And it was a really great way to experience foods that I've never tried. Uh, it's the duck fat. the like, foie, 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 foie. Yeah, they're just like fat and duck. Oh. That was really great, but man, so rich. But then uh, Hattie B's for hot chicken. Uh, that's yeah. just kind of the, the local staple. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, man. That's a good one. To me, there's nothing better than getting huevos rancheros at Carlitos on a weekend for brunch. That I would have to say that's my absolute favorite food. Oh, man. Uh, I have to give a shout out to the homie Rascal. It's his vegan he, uh, vegan restaurant. He started off as just like a, like a taco stand, and now he's built up to his own restaurant. It's been really great to see him uh, grow his company and put life into the vegan food industry in Santa Barbara. My favorite place to eat in Santa Barbara's Lido's have the best breakfast burritos. What about in Alabama where you're from? Waffle House. It's Waffle the best House? place to go in Alabama. Is it true that Waffle House only tastes good after midnight? Yes, definitely. <laughs> and it's about the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live close to a place called the Bear Pit. Uh, it's a barbecue place. It's Ooh. close to home. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, what do you get there? <laughs> uh, the ribs are really good. Uh, yeah, so barbecue ribs are really nice. good. Uh, first guitar well, was, was an Ibanez, um, and I ended up putting a, actually it was more than 30 years ago, so I actually put a Seymour Duncan in that guitar uh, back in 87. My brother did it for me. It was around 87. My first guitar was an Orpheus nylon string guitar. I got it for my ninth birthday. My first electric guitar I got, I was in junior high school. It was a no-name black Les Paul copy with single coil pickups that looked were under a humbucker housing. <laughs> so it didn't sound like a Les Paul. And in fact, it was squealed all the time if you got it very loud. But uh, that was, I got it so I could play in the jazz band at school. Oh man, it was a three quarter size Spanish acoustic that was a hand-me-down from my mom's cousin. They wanted somebody to play it. So she said, hey, I'm gonna give this to my son. So it's kind of a cool family thing. I still got that. My first electric guitar, a funny story about that. My first electric guitar was a Rogue by Squire by Fender, which was one of like the really sub-brand, sub-brands of the Strats. That was my first guitar. And then, you know, begged my parents for that, got 
that off of like eBay or for something really cheap. My first guitar was, um, I don't even remember the brand, but it was an acoustic that my parents and I saw at a flea market and the action was probably about this tall on it and the thing was a total workhorse, um, so it didn't last long. My first guitar was actually two part question, uh, two part answer. I had a harmony acoustic that was given to be to me. I had a harmony acoustic that was given to me by my grandparents. It used to belong to my mom. But my first electric was a PV Telecaster called the PV Reactor. My first guitar uh, was a Squire that from uh, the Guitar Center. It cost a hundred dollars, and it came with the practice amp. And I still have that guitar today. And I remember I didn't like the uh, black paint on it. So I thought I could scratch it all off and put orange paint. Uh, you don't do that. You cannot do that with uh, guitars. They just, you can't paint a guitar like that. That's not how it works. Uh, I have an Epiphone Les Paul. Yeah, it's the first guitar I ever had. Man, um, <laughs> the bands that I love listening to today, uh, I try to listen to Huey Lewis and the News, The Power of Love, every morning that's that's how i get my day started I'm a huge back to the future fan and those right. just first two horn stabs you can't just not hear those in the morning you just perk up a little you're like okay i'm on my day i'm late for class <laughs> probably jimmy page and I, I know it's cliche but um i actually had a friend that uh was taking guitar lessons and he was playing a bunch of led zeppelin riffs and i was like wow i want to be able to do that it's funny because i revisit it now and some of the playing was very loose and sloppy by today's standards standards um, back then and and when you revisit it you learn something new about it every time but the riffs were so cool um, and so different than everything else and and everyone else that was doing you know that style of music or the harder the harder rock um, and it just really kind of set the the pace for what was to come oh man I have a lot of favorite bands uh, I'm definitely a metalhead but the the big five in my mind have always been Metallica, Mars Volta was a huge influence on me. Malice Miser, Visual K Band from the 90s. Porcupine Tree, huge, huge band um, that has always been super influential to me. And I really, really love Insomnium. They're a melodic death metal band and they're just awesome. Oh, this is so cheesy, but I am a massive Beatles fan. And I would say that is my favorite band. Favorite album is Lonerism by Tame Impala. Some great distorted sounds in there. Great mix. Just all around 10 out of 10. I really don't, but I can tell you if there was a record that changed my life, even though I'd already been playing guitar and had even started to write songs. By the time I heard this, I was a freshman in high school and a friend of mine goes, hey man, I've just been, he goes, I woke up this morning, I was listening to the Jackson Brown Running On Empty album. And, and I thought, well, if Chris has really great music taste, I'll go down and get it. So I got it and I just listened to it straight. And I love the songwriting in it. And I love the guitar player, David Lindley, who usually he played lap steel guitar and this big, fat, just amazing guitar tone that he had. And just the way he supported the singer, not particularly flashy, but just like a spine chilling, emotional note to, to help accentuate what was going on in the song. From that moment, I wanted to write songs like Jackson Brown and play guitar like David Lindley, and I'm still working on it. Uh, I was a drummer before that, mm -hmm. since I was four, and uh, I was really a big Rush fan, and uh, Iron Maiden, uh, so I was listening to a lot of Iron Maiden, and then Kiss, and a bunch of different bands, but then when I started hearing like Yngwie Malmsteen, and Van Halen, uh, a lot of different bands, um, that really wanted me to be, made me be, want to become a guitar player. and. directly into the camera. That's probably make sure you're in frame. Yeah. Yeah, this is not gonna be usable. <laughs> <laughs> Just a warning. <laughs>